afternoon. Uh, I thought I'd do a couple of the questions from the um, sheet I've given you. This afternoon, to sort of you to watch, get you started. Okay, this is all work energy, power, kinetic energy, change in GP, that sort of stuff. Okay, but some of these questions are pulley ones. I know you haven't come across pulleys yet in M1. Okay, so in this first question, you've got two masses um, a mass of M sat on a tabletop and a mass of 3M hanging over the edge, and they are connected by a string that goes over a pulley down there. Okay. And the friction is, is uh, the pulley is frictionless and the string is inextensible. So what that means is when the mass of 3M drops by X meters, it means that the mass of M moves across by the same X meters. Okay, whatever that is. Okay. Um, we also know in this question that when they've moved... Um, X meters, whatever distance that is, they've both got a velocity now, so we're down here, they've got a velocity of 2.1 meters per second. Because they're connected, they've both got a velocity of 2.1 meters per second, okay, when they move. So there now. Okay, so the only way that these two particles can gain kinetic energy is because the 3M block has dropped and the GPE that it has lost has become the kinetic energy that both of them have gained. So what you can say is as a word equation, the change in GPE for the 3M block is equal to the total kinetic energy for both particles, for both blocks, both masses. That's the only energy that's being exchanged in this system, is GP being exchanged for kinetic energy, but it's not just one block moving, they are both moving. Okay. Right, so GPE is MGH, well M in this case is actually 3M, times 9.8, times some change in height, I called it X, Okay. which is, best you can do that, is 29.4 MX. And on the right hand side, well you've got the kinetic energy of the smaller mass, so a half mv squared, and then you've got the kinetic energy of the bigger mass as well, which is a half of 3mv squared. Okay, it's not particularly great writing. We know what v is, okay, what you end up with there is this 2 times m times 2.1 squared. Okay, so a half an m plus one and a half m's in other words gives you a total of 2 mv squared and v we know is 2.1. Now if you notice now then m is a term is a part of the gp and it's a part of kinetic energy so they cancel out. And What you're left with is that 29.4x is equal to 2 times 2.1 squared and if you work that through you'll get that x is 0.3 meters. Okay. So the amount of GPE lost when the 3m mass drops 0.3 meters is enough energy to give both particles 2.1 meters per second squared of kinetic energy. All right. So the most important things to learn about pulleys is that Whatever happens to one happens to the other. If one of them drops 0.3 meters, the other moves across 0.3 meters. If one of them is traveling at 2.1 meters per second, then so is the other. Okay. Right, next I'm going to do with you is question five. On question five, we've got an 800 kilogram car traveling up the hill. 800 kilograms. We're told in the question that there is a constant resistance of 800 newtons. Right? And we're also told that it increased its velocity from 5 meters per second at the bottom of the slope to 15 meters per second at the top of the slope. So even though it's going uphill, it still managed to accelerate. And we also know that the angle is 5 degrees of the hill and it traveled 300 meters altogether up the slope. Okay. 
Right, first question says to calculate the gain in the kinetic energy of the car. Okay, so that's the kinetic energy at the end. Take away the kinetic energy it had to start with. So it's a half times m times v squared, and at the end it was going 15 meters per second. Take away a half times 800 times 5 squared. It, at the beginning it was going 5 meters per second. It's gained 80,000 joules of kinetic energy. Okay, so that's part A, just looking at the kinetic energy and nothing else. Part B asks us to work out the gain in gravitational potential energy, which is mgh. To do that, we're going to have to work out h. Okay, so that's the opposite side of our right angle triangle. We know the hypotenuse is 300, so the height gained is 300 sine 5, okay, which is 26.147 metres. So when we do our MGH, our change in GPE is equal to M, 800, times G, which is 9.8, times H, which is 300, sine 5, or if you prefer, 26.147 metres. And what you'll calculate there is that this car gained a whopping 204,992 joules. Okay. Now, part C says, calculate the total work done by the car's engine during this time. Well, the car's engine has produced the gaining kinetic energy, so work done by engine is the increase in the kinetic energy, the engine did that, plus the increase in the GPE, because the engine did that, but it also did one more job, which we haven't considered yet, and that is the 800 newtons of resistance that's been acting on the car the entire time. Okay, So plus it's done work against friction. Air resistance is friction, friction is air resistance, however you want to say it. Okay. Now, friction is a force. To calculate the work done by a force, it's just force times distance, Fd. Okay. And it's in the direction of the force, and the force is acting in line with the slope, parallel to the slope. So we've got the 80,000 gaining kinetic, we've got the 204,992, which is the gain in GPE, plus we've got 800 times 300, 800 newtons times 300 meters, another, uh, what's that, 240,000 um, joules there. So that gives us a total of 500 24,992 joules when you include the work done against friction as well. Okay, So don't forget there, if we were going down the slope, if we'd started at the top of the slope and we're coming down, the 800 times 300 would be adding um, energy in. So the engine would have to do less work. Okay, We would take that away. Because if, if the, if the 800 newtons has done the work, the engine doesn't need to. Okay, it's already been done. So be careful. If you're going up the slope, you're working against friction. If you're coming down the slope, that same amount of work is actually helping you out. It's helping you to gain velocity. Okay. Then we've got question 8, which is another um, pulleys one. In this question, we've got a smaller mass of m and a bigger mass of 2m. And we're told that when they travel a distance of a, we've got to find their speed. So the 2m one is heavier, that's going to drop by a distance of a. The m one, which is lighter and they're connected, will rise by a distance a. Okay. And we've got to find the velocity when they've moved this distance of a. Okay, so we're looking for, now this one will be traveling downwards, 
and this one will be traveling upwards. Okay. And because A is an unknown, we're going to be working in terms of A. Okay. Now then, if we want to if we want to gain some kinetic energy because we're at rest at the minute, the only place that could come from is some sort of change in GPE. Okay. So the total gain in kinetic energy is equal to the change in GPE for the heavier box, I mean they call it box B, so I'll put a little sub B there. So that one's going to lose quite a lot of kinetic energy, but some of that is going to be given to block A, which actually increases its GPE. Okay, So that is 2M times 9.8 times A take away m times 9.8 times a, which gives you 9.8 ma. That's left over to be converted into kinetic. Okay, Some of the GPE that was lost by b was gained by a, but not all of it. So whatever's left over, so 9.8 ma is available for kinetic energy, but it's kinetic energy for the entire system. So the 9.8 ma is for both particles, so it's the little one's kinetic energy, half mv squared, plus the big one's kinetic energy, a half of 2m v squared. Okay. Right, that gives us then 9.8 ma is equal to 1.5 mv squared. Okay, we've got half an m on the first term, we've got a whole m on the second term, so one and a half mv squared. Our m's will cancel. So 9.8a is equal to 1.5 v squared. It's v that we're trying to find, so we need to do 9.8 divided by 1.5. That gives you 6.53 recurring A is equal to V squared. And the best you can do with that then is that V is the square root of 6.53 A. Okay. So in summary, I'll just go through that one more time. They were both at rest, but when they moved they gained kinetic energy. Where did the energy come from? It came from B losing more GPE than what A gained, because A is lighter, even though they moved the same distance. Okay. So that difference, that leftover energy, 9.8 MA, is what gets sort of converted into kinetic energy. It's the kinetic energy of both particles, which are travelling at the same velocity because they're connected by a string, so they've moved the same distance and they're travelling at the same velocity. So then I've just worked it through and got an expression for V in terms of A. Hopefully what I've done here will help you on the rest of the questions. Okay. Remember, if you've got um, resistive forces, you'll need to do force times distance for work done against friction. When you're travelling up a slope, you'll need to work out the height gained or the height lost, Okay, and work out whether that's adding to the, the energy of the system. Is it going to make the object get faster? Or is it going to make the object get slower? Be careful with your signs. Okay, let me know if you've got any problems.